Okay, so next I just wanted to do some intuition on variance. Um, so variance, kind of like the name would suggest, as opposed to invariance, they don't change as the loop progresses. Uh, so, sorry, they do change as the loop progresses. So if you've got, um, you know, while i is greater than zero, do stuff, do stuff, uh, i is equal to i plus one, then obviously the thing that's changing iteration to iteration is i. Um, and so that in itself, I guess, doesn't like immediately appear useful. Um, but basically what it boils down to is in the whole, this whole section of logical correctness um, stuff that we've been doing, it basically boils down to like, we're not going to take your word that this works or is true, prove it using really simple statements that we do believe are true. Um, so the whole purpose of invariance, as I understand it, uh, comes from the fact that if you have a number, so any number, let's call it x, um, better x, which belongs to the set of natural numbers, which um, as a recap is 0, 1, 2, so positive integers, any positive integer. Um, including zero, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so if you have a number that belongs to the set of natural numbers, if you decrease it by a big enough number, so if you kind of go like x minus minus enough times, it will eventually equal zero. Like this has to happen at some point. Um, and that's kind of like, that's one of these bedrock logic things, kind of like how you don't have to prove four equals four or x equals x. Um, this is kind of the the thing that we're allowed to just rely on being true. So if something is in the set of natural numbers, if it's a positive integer, and we're minusing it by one enough times, it will eventually equal zero. Or if we're minusing it by some given um, some given value, minus equals y. So if we're going kind of minus two, minus two, minus two, minus y equals two, um, then it will eventually end up as less than or equal to zero, because it might skip over zero specifically, but it will end up as less than or equal to zero. Um, so this is kind of like the the purpose of invariants and why we why we care about them, because that's kind of like this bedrock logic. So once we know that that's kind of like what we're looking for, the whole s the stuff you have to prove about variants to make them I think the wording of the question is always like, you know, prove this variant is suitable to, to prove that the algorithm will always terminate or something like that. And so it kind of makes sense then, the three things you have to prove. So one, you have to prove that your variant belongs to the set of natural numbers because uh, this stuff only holds true if it's a natural number. So we have to prove that our variant belongs to the set of natural numbers. Two, we have to prove that our variant reduces... Um, reduces every iteration. And then especially in a while loop, since that happens until it terminates, um, then if it hasn't terminated yet, so if we still care about the variant, then that happens forever. Um, so hence this kind of like minusing any number of times, it will eventually equal zero. So what we know is that if our variant belongs to the set of natural numbers, and our variant reduces every iteration, then because of this bedrock logic, we know that eventually v will equal zero. That's just a thing that we know for certain, or if it's being reduced by a certain amount, um, then we know that it will eventually be equal to or less than zero. And so that kind of makes the third thing we have to prove really obvious, which is uh, if v equals zero, the loop terminates. Or again, um, in the other example, it would be if uh, v is less than or equal to zero, the loop terminates. And so that, to me, kind of all makes sense. Once you bear in mind that this is the logic we're relying on, so we're saying, okay, the variant is a natural number. The variant is being reduced by kind of infinite number of times, which means that eventually it will equal zero or equal less than zero. And that means if we can show that when it equals zero, when it's less than zero, that the loop will terminate, then we've proven that the loop will terminate. Um, because relying on this logic, that just has to happen. Um, so that's why when we look for variance, we're always trying to look at it 
uh, in terms of something that will eventually equal zero or be less than zero. Um, so hopefully that makes uh, a little bit more sense, um, and I'll go over some more details for them uh, in in further videos.